Guno's Faust is an opera that we haven't done for some years, and interestingly, when we last did it, the bass singing the role of Mephistopheles was the same one, Ferruccio Furlanetto. So Ferruccio is in fact our linchpin here. Faust is a, a great opera, great story about the devil, love, lust, everything that makes life worthwhile, all tied up in the one opera, and all it with absolutely glorious music by Guno. So I think that this is the perfect second opera for San Diego Opera this year, and we have a very remarkable cast for it. And with the sets and costumes that we have by Staley, which are absolutely gorgeous, this is going to be another winner for San Diego Opera. Richard Bonning, of course, has been around for years. Richard Bonning is one of the most experienced conductors in the French repertoire in the world today, and considering he's an Australian, uh, that's something of a surprise. We all know that he had a great career working with his own wife, Joan Sutherland, but he's conducted so frequently elsewhere that he is very much his own man when it comes to conducting, and he can now pick and choose what he wants to do. And he says to me frequently, if, if the project is good, he'll do it. And when he looked at the cast for this Faust, he decided this was the kind of project he wanted to be involved in. I think it's a, a very great masterwork. It's one of the greatest operas ever written, probably. It's, a, it was, it's written in, what, it's 1859, if I remember rightly. And um, it was written as an opera comique to begin with, with spoken dialogue. And then uh, there was another version done for England in which they added the, uh, the aria Even Bravest Heart, which, which is not in the original version. Um, it was written with English words and they've been translated into French. And uh, he also put another aria for Siebel in that. Then they did the big version for the Paris Opera with the full ballet. And uh, that's the only, my only regret here is that I don't get to do the ballet, which is very understandable because it costs a fortune. It's very, it's very expensive. But it's, it's, whether you do this version or that version, it remains a very great opera. It's uh, Guno, it's Guno's masterwork, I'm sure, although he has written some other very, very fine operas. But uh, Faust seems to have captured the public's imagination, in, especially in the 19th century when it was performed by every company, everywhere. And even uh, later into this century, I mean, I think it, it sort of went a little bit out of fashion for t uh, 20 or 30 years at the beginning of this century. But, you know, the old opera company like the Carl Rosa in England, they had it very f firmly entrenched in the, in the repertoire as late as the 50s. And uh, now, of course, it's coming back, like all the French repertoire, all the big massenets and, and things, they're coming back into fashion again, and, and people like, the, like them again because they say something to you, you know, they've got a big emotional impact. And uh, I, to me, that's what you go to the opera for. I don't think it's an intellectual exercise. I think you go there either to, to, to laugh, to cry, to, to feel something. And with, with Faust, you certainly do feel something because the, the, the emotions in the music are very, very strong. And if you, you need, of course, first-rate singers. This is not an opera for, for beginners. You need a big major voices who understand how to sing and how to communicate. And I think we're lucky we have, we have that. We have a very, very lovely cast here, and, and I'm enjoying myself immensely.
right on time. Good. Thank you very much. Four minutes. Faust is a, a drama. It's a, a drama that is really deep, very personal. The interactions between the characters are very, very important. And one needs a director who can get inside these characters, but also has a sense of fun, because there are humorous moments throughout Faust. It, it isn't a comedy, it's a drama. But the comedy moments are very important. Lynn Dabrowski is one of the finest directors I know around the country at the moment. Very experienced, working everywhere. Just play with me. Toss. And it tosses. You tosses. An opera singer concentrates primarily on the voice. And they want to know where their feet are going. Be so that they can then concentrate on the voice. They want the staging very quickly. Uh, and I think because their training is primarily in music rather than drama, as a director you have to fill in the blanks a lot more for them. For an actor, they come to the rehearsal with book in hand. And for them it's an exploration of the drama they tend to get insecure around the music. I would never dream of giving an actor very, very detailed direction on an initial rehearsal because it's up to them to explore the general staging. And, f and, and then together we collaborate in filling in the blanks. However, when they get to songs, they usually want to stand and sing unless it's a very choreographed number, but whereas an opera singer moves all the time while they're singing, that's their, that's their job. And you can, you can be, you can sort of keep trying to ride out of there. It's always interesting for a director, no matter what your concept or, or, or your plan is when you come in, and because this rehearsal process was very, a very short rehearsal time, I had to come in with most of it worked out in detail of what I wanted to do. But then you meet the personalities you, it, who come with more or less experience in the role. And you take their ideas, you, t you adapt to the body type, you adapt to the personality, you adapt to the vocal needs of that singer. Whereas one singer may be very comfortable moving no matter what they're singing or can sing on the floor and it's not an issue for them. Another singer may indeed have to be standing at a certain point in the music. It's in the, the wedge of the trap. Okay, so it's stand, it's literally, he's, he's got his own tombstone going on here. Mm -hmm. And then you take off, okay? I think we're extremely fortunate in San Diego to have Ferruccio Ferlinetto singing the role of Mephistopheles. He's certainly an old hand at the role and brings a great deal of musical expertise and solidity to the role, but also dramatic insight. He has a very, I would say his initial approach was a very dark approach to Mephisto and together we've been trying to bring out some of Ferruccio's natural charm and sort of virility to the devil, so that the devil really is the handsome devil, as opposed to the menacing uh, Mephisto that we, we probably associate in Faust. <laughs> It's a very French Mephisto, I must say, it's, which is uh, completely different, for instance, from the Boito one, where the devil is just a nasty, evil creature, a monster. Here is a, a sort of very elegant, ironic, bon vivant. Of course, he's, he's a devil, but uh, he's watching humanity with a kind of irony, if not even 
not tenderness, but almost. I mean, it's, it's just uh, understanding our poor nature, very poor nature. So, and it's, uh, it's quite interesting to play this role rather than the boito, where it's purely vocal and nasty, because it could be played in certain scenes a la, a la Don Giovanni, if you want, because Giovanni, in certain moments, has the same kind of devilish character than Mephisto. The story itself, of, although it's more a fairy tale in this piece of Gounod, in comparison with Goethe, it's also <coughs> Uh, something that is attracting audiences since centuries. So um, it's uh, it's an opera that had an, an enormous success in the in the beginning of the last century, and then gradually it was less performed. I think because it's quite demanding for the for the roles. I mean uh, all. You need a very good tenor, you need a very good soprano, a very good bass, and very good character roles around these three. <coughs> so uh, sometimes it's not so easy to put together, because there is a risk with this kind of opera and music, that if it is performed in a lower average way, it really falls down. So it has to be performed with a sort of high standard. Whenever we put any opera together, we're looking for the best voices that we can afford in the roles. And we are also looking out for new voices that we can discover. And I think one of the excitements of this particular production is that we have a new voice, Octavio Arevalo, who is a Mexican tenor who auditioned for me in Europe about three and a half years ago now, and it was evident even then that he had a great future. He's now made quite a few recordings, he's already developed a very fine career in Europe, and I think that this launching of him now in the United States will lead to an extensive U.S. career as well. <laughs> I, I'm really very happy to, to sing this, this role. The, the work is wonderful. It's the typical French romantic opera. And there is a lot to learn in, in, this, in this role. Um, it's not e easy, I mean, to be the old man and then the young. Maybe the opposite is easier. But this is the life and I'm, I'm really happy. And I'm, I want to learn this development. The first uh, step to learn uh, such a role is to take the, the partiture and to hear the music and if possible to play myself the music and not only my, my role, to try to, to understand all the piece. It's, it's a unit, I mean it's not a, a lot of roles, it's all the piece. And then, of course, I go to my, my music, my, my role. From the music and the words, I try to, to be, uh, to, uh, thus, I try to, to make this music my, my feeling. These words, my meaning. I mean, it's not more Faust, it's, uh, 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 mix between Octavio and Faust.
The story of Faust is typical, I think, of many high-tech and other industries because what happens is Faust sells his soul to the devil for, for advancement, probably for stock, who knows. But in fact, what he's doing, it's for the love of Marguerite. The devil has shown him that youth can bring him love and when he shows him Marguerite, he falls madly in love with her. But it ends up tragically because you can't do a deal with the devil. We all know that very well. And in fact, Marguerite gets pregnant to Faust. She murders her own baby. So it's all downhill from there. As my part is quite simple, would I say, because it's a very straight character. Marguerite is just a poor girl. She was, uh, when she was young, she was very happy. She had old family around her, her brother, her sister, mother, and she grew up very happy. And suddenly, he lost everything. So, and what makes young girl being suddenly completely alone, unhappy, having nobody? You know, you, you need, everybody needs somebody. And uh, there is no, in libretto, she has no dog or no cat. She has nothing, she has just Martha, but Martha is much, much older. So I think she cannot speak like to a friend. And she is always with Martha. That means for me, she has no friends in her age. And, and you know, after some time, it, it grow up inside, so you, you have to have a possibility to, to, to just push it out. All your feelings, all what you need, all your love, or all, even if you hate somebody or something. And, and in this moment, it happens, she saw a beautiful, perhaps not beautiful, but very handsome and very elegant young man. And for the first time, somebody was um, speaking with her or to her in such a kindly way. And that was the moment she was touched by heart and she completely lose her heart and everything. I think she forgot all the world around her. So, uh, of course, she had no idea. It, it isn't just happened. Well, you know, it happened because of the devil. So until this moment, it's a very simple story for me. And also then, all these beautiful, of course, we have no time in the opera. Everything has to be done very, very quickly. So, the, you know, the first date with Faust and, and, and the very short um, small talk about, oh, I love you, I love you too, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and it just happened. Personally, for me, uh, it's easier to be dramatic and sad or crazy. So, the first part, I think it's uh, not vocally, but uh, um, uh, what about acting? About acting, it's more difficult for me. Vocally, it's just beautiful music, very good written. So with beautiful highs and uh, sometimes a little bit too low. But Maestro is doing very, very well. He keeps the orchestra very, very um, piano. So it, it, it should work.
They're on a lot. The entire Act One, Scene Two is the chorus. It's about the individuals. It's about the society that these characters exist in. And they are constantly interrelating with the principles, but also creating the social milieu that can at one point be feasting and celebrating the glories of wine and debauchery and in the third act, condemning Marguerite for getting pregnant and shunning her. The opening scene for the chorus, which is the Kermesse, is a particularly difficult scene for them to sing. The men are in four-part DVC, the women are in two. So you have six parts that are fairly independent of each other completely. Uh, and then the Brodsky, the director of this production, has taken advantage of that in the staging. Lynn is a wonderful director. I've enjoyed working with her quite a bit. She's different than previous directors we've had in that she directs every single one of the 60 people in the chorus. I've tried to make them all the individuals with their own personalities, with their own reasons for being at the fair. And they've all had their moments in the sun, as we call it, where some of them have featured dance roles, some of them have featured moments with the principals. They've come to the rehearsal process very open, and I have to say really risen to the occasion. They're quite marvelous. <laughs> in this opera is very important to the plot in that they largely interpret what's going on for the audience. They have interjections and comments throughout the opera about what's going on. Also dramatically they respond to what's going on on stage. They are given specific dramatic things that they do so that they respond very specifically and they help lead the audience. They're very important to the action of, of this opera. is a, a wonderful show insofar as you have everything in the kitchen sink, jugglers, acrobats, children, exploding swords, and we have a sword fight where Valentin, the brother of Marguerite, challenges Faust to a duel for his, uh, shall we say, bad behavior previously. I brought in a fight master, Steve Rankin, who staged a wonderful, authentic fight scene rather than two singers quack quack and stab which is what's usually done Mephistopheles in this particular fight I had asked Steve to include him so he wasn't just doing it long distance by magic, but that he was an active participant in it. So it's sort of a fight scene for three people. It's quite exciting and quite interesting, and they rehearse it every night before they go on, just for safety purposes. The, the Faust legend, the man who wishes 
The ultimate knowledge is not so far from our culture, nor is his desire to remain eternally young. You just have to look at the TV commercials on any station about take our vitamin, t use our hand cream, whatever. We all want that eternal youth. Uh, the temptations of the devil, we don't have the guy in the red suit with the pointed tail running around in our culture, but we certainly have the temptations of money, the temptations of sensuality, sexuality, the temptations of using people and tossing them away when they no longer serve your purpose. So I think in that way, Faust is not that difficult to make it a universal appeal. <laughs> A very handsome cast, a very fine acting cast, great voices, and with conductor Richard Bonning, who knows this repertoire so well, I think we're going to make great music, and that's what opera is about. But we also have here great sets, great costumes, fabulous story. So why not? Uh, Faust is definitely going to be, I think, a great success. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,